Hey guys, welcome back. All right, so the first property we're gonna look at is a reflective property. So here, notice I underlined the the, the root word reflect, because here it, you can see that a is equal to a. So here, what you're saying is that the number three is equal to number three. You know that already, okay? And that's called the reflective property. A is equal to a. Uh, let's look at the uh, symmetric property. Here, we're saying that if A is equal to B, well, then B is equal to A. Uh, for example, you know that 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. Well, you can also say that 5 is equal to 2 plus 3. So notice how I switched, and it means the same thing. You can also look at it like 2 times 5 is the same as 5 times 2. It's going to give you the same answer. Okay. Uh, transitive property. Transitive property. Here, uh, this one's the longer one. This one's saying is if a is equal to b and b is equal to c, then a is equal to c. Here, uh, we can look at it almost like substituting. So notice what I'm going to do here. A is equal to B, but we know that B, I already have it there, is equal to C. So notice what I have when I just string everything together. A equal to B, B equal to C. Well, we don't need that middleman. If you take out that middleman, we know that A is equal to C. Okay, so there you have your transitive property. And here we have a principle of substitution. Here we're saying that if A is equal to B, then we substitute b for a in any expression that has a. Okay, you actually do this all the time. It sounds more complicated here, but you do it all the time. Okay, let me show you one quick one. All right, let's look at what we have. Here this says, given x equal to 3, solve x plus 7. Well, look at how this ties into that principle substitution. If a is equal to b, so here x is our a, here's our equal sign, and 3 is our b. What we'll do here is that then we will substitute b, okay, so to that 3 for a, so we're going to put 3 for any x in any expression that has a. So we can, this is, we're saying that we can put the 3 for any x that we see anywhere. So we can go ahead and solve this. I'm going to say that 3 plus 7 is 10. Now, you know how to do this. But this is just the wording uh, that actually lets this happen. All right, here we're looking at the commutative property of adding and multiplying. Now the root word here is commute. When you commute, that means to, to move, all right? Just like uh, when you watch the news in the morning, you're watching the morning commute for the traffic. You wanna see how the traffic's flowing, you wanna see how it's moving. So commute means to move. Here in the commutative property, notice that I have a plus b, I'm saying this is the same as commuting them, B plus A. Okay, all I did was I pulled the old switcheroo and there's, it's still equal, you can still say that. That's why you can say two plus five is the same as five plus two. Okay. Same thing for multiplying. You can go ahead and say A times B is equal to B times A. Okay, two times three is the same as three times two. Okay, uh, they're gonna, you're gonna get six either way. So. There you have your commutative property, and hopefully this helps you remember what you do here. All right, here we're looking at the associative property of adding and multiplying. Here you can look at your keyword associate, which would mean to enter a union. So it's who you're with, just like your associate is who you group yourself with. Here we can see that A is by itself, B and C are associates. You see that when they're in the parentheses. But if everything, and please notice that everything uh, between the elements has to be adding, so everything's adding, is equal to A and B being associates now. So at first B and C are associates, now A and B are associates. Same thing here, if everything is multiplying, B and C are associates, and they can switch off and you can say that A and B are associates. Uh, this is actually helpful if you're solving something 
uh, especially if you're doing it mentally and you don't know what B and C are, if you're multiplying, but you do know what A and B is, you can do that first, okay? That's not a big deal. So you can see that since they're equal, you can't do that. It's a, it's a legal move in math and you're good. Okay, and here we have the distributive property. So to distribute means to give out. Just like if I'm distributing papers in a class, I'll, I don't go ahead and I pass one out to each student. I'll actually just count how many they are. I'll give five to the person in the front and they distribute it. They distribute it for me, okay? Uh, even if I went and, and distributed papers and gave one to each person, it's still distributing, all right? So here, look at what I'm doing. I have A times, and there's stuff happening in a parentheses, okay? So here, I'm going to distribute this A to everyone in that parentheses, okay? And they have to be separated by either addition or subtraction. So here I have A gets distributed to the B, so A times B, AB. Here's my sign, here's my plus sign, plus, okay, so I don't drop anything. A times C, there's A times C. There, I just distributed that A, all right? Now this is normally how you see it. You can't have this though. Sometimes instead of writing the, uh, your first element for the product on the in the front, the right in the back, but it means the same thing. So here, like I said, you usually don't see it like this, just pay attention to whatever they give you. So A, I'm oh, sorry, C times A, so here I have AC, here's my addition sign, I didn't drop it. By the way, this could be subtraction too, so I can have stuff like this, okay. And then C times B, there's my C times B, there. All right, here you have your identity property. So remember, your identity always stays the same, whether you're wearing a school uniform or uh, your hangout clothes, you're still the same person, that's your identity. So here, same thing's happening with the numbers. I have A plus zero is the same as zero plus A, okay? Not a big deal, but notice that it's equal to A. I don't have to write plus zero. Okay, that would be like me going up to a person, they ask me my age, and I say, oh, well, I'm 29 plus zero. I don't have to say that. Technically, I'm right, okay? But I don't have to say that, okay? Just like you don't have to say your age plus zero. Technically, you're right, but you don't go ahead and say that. So we can just say that A plus zero is A. What if you're multiplying? If you're multiplying, you're gonna use a one instead. So here you're saying that A plus, uh, sorry, A times one, is the same as one times a, not a big deal, but notice that it stays as a, all right? So, same thing with age. I don't go around saying I'm 29 times one, I just say I'm 29. Technically I'm right, but I don't say that, okay? So identity stays the same. Additive inverse, really fast, really easy. a plus negative a, so notice that I have something, I have a number, then I take it away. Well, now I don't have anything. So A minus A, zero. There, that's an easy one. All right, here you have the multiplicative inverse. So here you're saying A times one over A is equal to A over A equal to one. Okay, let me do that one with a number so you can see a little bit better. If I, all I do is substitute the, um, the variables for numbers. And here you'll notice that I have three times, so three, times one over three. Well, if I multiply it out, okay, if you want to, you can do the, put the one underneath, and you'll notice that three times one is three, and one times three is three. Well, three divided by three is one, okay? So here's actually where you get reciprocals from, okay? The reciprocal, that formal definition states that it is the, Multi multiplicative inverse that will get your uh, final expression to be a one. So I know you guys just are used to hearing just flip it over. Technically that's not the definition, but just doing that will get you the, the reciprocal. Okay, so you can go ahead and do that. Oh, forgot, little side note, a reciprocal cannot be over zero.
It's a big no-no. Okay, in math you can never have a zero as a denominator. Alright? Even if you put that into your calculator, you'll notice that it's going to say error. Okay? That's a no-no. Alright, here we have some rules for signs. Notice that here I have a positive times a negative equal negative. So, a positive times a negative is a negative. A negative times a positive is still negative. A negative times a positive is still negative. Negative times negative is positive. Negative, negative, rules of positive. Here they're both positive anyway, so positive times positive is positive. Okay. And a lot of people forget this one, but this actually just repeats what's up here. Now, if you want, if you want, you can go ahead and make your imaginary ones there. Um, I tr try to tell my students not to do that so that they get used to just know, knowing that there's a one there without writing it in. Uh, but if you're starting off, go ahead and do that. But after a while, try to wean off of that. That's more like training wheels. So after a while, you're not, you're not gonna use your training wheels forever. Okay, you're gonna take them off once you get used to riding your bike. Same thing here. Once you get used to knowing that there's a one there, you're good. So this actually just says negative times a negative, just like before, that's a positive, all right? Here, with dividing, they're pretty much the same rules as multiplying. Notice that I have a positive divided by negative. So my answer actually just stays negative. Now, I think I showed you in the last video that we never write our answers like this though, okay? We never leave an, an answer with a denominator with a negative, okay? We'll usually just write it in the numerator and notice that they are equal or we'll write it off to the side, okay? Depending on what you're doing, if you see a negative on the side, you might want to write it up here, okay? but these two are fine. We never leave our answers like this. This is considered unsimplified. Okay, and here, just that can multiply a negative divided by negative. So it's gonna give me a positive answer. Okay, those negatives cancel out. All right, last one for today, I promise. Okay, these are the ca cancellation properties. Okay, here we see that we have A times C equal to B, C. Well, notice that they have the C's in common. Okay. This would imply that A is equal to B. Same thing with dividing. AC divided by BC. Once again, notice that they have C's in common. This implies that this simplifies to A over B. And that's it for today. All right, so next time we'll look at inequality symbols and absolute values.